Welcome to Star Powered Astrology for Changemakers. I'm Leslie Tagorda, your guide, a Hawaii born Filipino Jewish astrologer who loves navigating visionaries like you through the spiritual journey of your work so that you can be inspired to lead by your chart and become the luminary leader you were born to be. Hey, luminary, it's Leslie back for a second episode of Star Powered. Today, I wanted to explore how astrology connects the dots between our inner healing spiritual journey and our outward expression of our highest potentials in our change making work. As I've been going on my own inner healing journey this year with like my Chiron return and my Saturn sitting right on top of my sun, just kind of like dulling everything. And I, and I I know I've shared this story with you, so you know why I've been kind of pulling back a little bit from the podcast, but what's really pulling me out of this kind of hiding and hermitizing is thanks to this latest eclipse season. Last weekend, as the eclipse was building our Scorpio solar eclipse, I knew something big was really happening. And I was on my scheduled business retreat with um, my business coach, Megan Hale. And uh, this retreat, I knew I needed to take this retreat and I was really resisting planning anything big. We had like different things that we knew we wanted to do. Like we were going to Calistoga in Northern California wine country. And yes, I'm so grateful and so lucky that we got to have that time to do that. But we didn't have any like workshops planned or events planned or anything. It was more of a go with the flow. And oftentimes, at least for me, when I go with the flow and I'm in that place, that is where that magic happens. But I also needed Megan with me because in that go and the flow, she was constantly like pushing and prodding in a kind and gentle way for me to really focus on the next big work that was coming through. Because by the time we had this retreat in Calistoga, I'd already released Star Powered. I already have this vision of what I want to bring into the world in 2023, but I did not have those individual stepping stones. And so during our four day retreat, where, you know, in between like relaxing by the pool and going to these amazing, most delicious dinners, Megan was like, Leslie, you know, we have to fill out your framework. And I was like, what are you talking about? I already have my framework. I've had this framework for over 12 years when I'm talking about like the Astro Brand method and how the Astro Brand method brings your vision of your business together, the voice of your business together, and the style of your business together. And she's like, you know what, Leslie, you really don't talk too much about your astro brand method, even though that's in the inner workings of your business. And when you're working on your design, um, design clients, and I was like, huh, you know what, when I am online on this podcast, I'm rarely talking about that external branding piece. I'm talking yes about a lot of leadership and yes about a lot of astrological cycles. And really lately, I've noticed that my work has really taken a turn for the inner healing, like um, Chiron and midlife awakening. And when I'm doing my astro brand, my one-on-one sessions with clients, we spend so much time unraveling the stories of distrust and keeping small and not finding our own value. I was like, you know what, Megan, you are right. There is something huge that is missing in my current framework for this work that I'm bringing through. So if you remember, I want to, I want to rewind the camera a little bit back to March of this year, March of 2022. And this is when I kind of jumped off and I took a leap of faith and I said, Hey, I'm going to kind of slow down in my business a little bit because, um, I was kind of burned out. I was doing two episodes a week for the savvy luminary and I had all of this client work. I was doing all of these ceremonies and I was pouring all of my work out. But at that time, Saturn, which, you know, Saturn 
is sometimes like feels like a little damp towel, but Saturn has its purpose. Saturn likes to put boundaries up and bring things in. And Saturn in Aquarius was sitting smack dab on my sun. And it felt like this little depression. But really what this depression was asking me to do was to come back in, to go inwards. And gratefully, I know my astrology. Gratefully, I know my human design. And I took this as the permission to use my projector, my emotional projector 2-4, which is one of the hermits, a hermit opportunistic line. So I was like, oh, this hermit is really calling. And I went inward. And just because I went inward, it doesn't mean that there weren't things happening in my business. This has, the this last year has been so great in my business with delivering on the work that I've already committed to and all those things. But where I'm going with this is that from this process of going inward right before last eclipse season, when we had the Taurus new moon eclipse, as well as the Scorpio full moon eclipse back in April and May, where I had another awakening, this eclipse season, in addition to bringing out this new framework, I came face to face with what was truly blocking me. I don't know if I mentioned in a couple of podcasts ago, like back in April and May, where I was having these kinds of tingles, these visions of being a BFD a big fucking deal and really having some problems with kind of stepping into that energy. I remember at that eclipse season, I went to another business retreat, um, Megan Hill's feel good money. And I remember stepping into the room and, you know, seeing 20 to a couple dozen people there and almost every single person recognizing me and recognizing my work. And I was so excited to see people and I would see people and I'd be like, Oh my gosh, it's Jordan. Nanny, she's such a big fucking deal. I'm like, Jordan, oh my goodness, like little fangirl. And she's looking at me like, oh my goodness, Leslie, fangirl. (laughs) I was like, why is she looking at me like that? Um, I was clearly not stepping in and owning the power that I had already built for myself. Six months later, and eclipses have a way of doing this and repeating the patterns. This eclipse season, when I saw Megan, and Megan's like, you still haven't stepped into your BFD energy, have you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like... I can just see it. We're going to work on this. So, you know, when you're in a car and you're driving and we had, um, we picked her up at SFO and we drove down to Cal up to Calistoga. It's about a two hour drive and we were just driving. And she was asking me about these different parts of my framework and the astrology part. And I just kind of like, just kind of nonchalantly without any, like, um, how do you want to say without any bravado or anything? I was just like, you know, nobody reads a natal chart like me. And we continue just going down on that conversation. Well, little did I know that Megan had just like hooked her ears onto what I had said. And she's like, we're going to talk about this. So We get to Calistoga and just like the stars are completely aligned with us leading up to the eclipse. Like I said, we didn't have anything planned. So it was super relaxing because we weren't rushing to anything. We were just being guided to, oh, is it time to go relax in um, in the healing spa? Oh, is it time to go get some yummy food? Oh, is it time to go on a hike? Oh, is it time to go on this amazing yoga class that we got invited to? Oh, is it time to go to this amazing um, <laughs> Italian barbecue that we just instantaneously got Um invited to it was just like absolutely amazing to have zero plans and yet everything come to us every magical adventure just came to us I was so grateful and in between all of those places of fun and relaxation the work started pouring through me without too much resistance. Now there was resistance and this was from me because I was like, hold on, I'm relaxing. I don't want to think about this. Meg, it's like, Hey, we're still working here. And I was like, Oh yes, we're still working. And Megan insisting that there is something missing in my current framework for my astro brand method and how I use astrology to map out this outward brand identity. 
right? So this brand identity, my framework of vision, um, voice, and style, again, I've had this for over 12 years. Before I started working astrology into my business, remember, I have my my business started back in 2004 when I was designing um, visual identities and websites for people. And even back then, when I look up all of my old archives of all my marketing materials, vision, voice, and style, vision, voice, and style over and over again. And in these 12 years of all of these projects, I you might have heard me share this story before. I had projects that would take forever to do. Like I'm talking forever. I remember I had this like the sweet, the sweetest client. She was just such a wonderful client and she wanted to open up a concierge business. Um, She was very nitpicky. She came from a very well-to-do neighborhood in San Francisco and she had like this design aesthetic that was just super wonderful and just like absolutely perfect. Like think of like Martha Stewart on steroids. And so she hired me to design her um, a brand identity with everything that was printed, um, these beautiful menus and place cards and all of these stationary sets. We printed them in um, letterpress printing. We spent like thousands of dollars on printing. It was beautiful. We spent so much time picking the exact right purple and the exact right like um, the exact right paper. And then when we got to her website, like hemming and hawing over every single word that just had to be absolutely perfect. And I was so excited to bring and launch this into the world and launch her business into the world because she was going to just do so many beautiful things for her clients. Guess what happened? Nothing. Oh my goodness. I don't really know who was more disappointed, her or me, when nothing happened after she launched her website. She was, I remember that she was so afraid to launch her website. She didn't even talk to about her project to her friends, to her family, barely to her, um, to her husband. And we did all of that work, hours and hours and hours of refining. And I was so frustrated. I felt like it was a waste of time. And and not just like, I wasn't blaming her. I was like thinking like, what's going on? Because this wasn't the only client that had this had happened, right? And that was at that time back in 2017, when now I know I was going through my Uranus opposition, my midlife awakening, where I felt trapped. Like I wasn't making a difference. And it was, I wasn't making a difference because it wasn't that I didn't have the experience. We had crafted something that was like Martha Stewart worthy. It was that both of us, both she and I did not have the inner healing and the inner confidence to actually launch this thing off the ground. And so a couple of things, a couple of powerful things that happened when I finally found astrology back in 2018 and started weaving this into my branding, that external part of the business, the how we present ourselves, how we package up all of our services and our visual identity and our brand identity, right? Those are all also like very outward expressions, But the thing that I've mostly been doing over like the last couple of years, especially for myself, and then, you know, when you do one thing for yourself, it starts to like spread out to your clients, was that the other part that astrology was helping me guide is to do the healing inner work. Because what we know is that the people that have the most success, the most aligned and authentic success, we're not talking about the people that are hoarding power and manipulating people and just like a greedy AF, right? We're talking about the people who are doing really good change in the work, in the world. They have been, and also maybe profiting in their business. They have been doing in parallel the inner healing work to overcome their own um, lack of value, lack of confidence and fear so that they can show up and truly authentically lead in a business. And what has been super stark for me, clear as day, is that this is where astrology 
comes in because, and you know, astrology, my tool, there's many different ways to do this, but for me, you know, me as an astrologer and what I started to notice was that our inner journey, that inner journey. And I've been talking a little bit about that inner spiritual journey where we have inner, that inner pull to want to get out of different kinds of challenges, to work on challenges, to face our pains, to face the things that we really need to heal, to step into our highest potential, to know our own worth, to know our own confidence, to know our own expertise, to build our courage, to trust in ourselves, to trust into the unknown. All of these are the inner personal wisdom tools and courage that we need, inner leadership that we need in order to go out and share our gifts in the world. So it's no wonder that lately in my workshops and in my one-on-ones, I see this like gravitation to examining the shadows in our work and where we need to heal, whether this is looking at our moon sign and giving us the tender, loving care and the reparenting and the inner child work to validate and express the feelings instead of logicizing them. Like when I say logicizing them, I don't even know if that's a real word, but like, you know, like, is this true or is this not true? Well, it's not true, but I still feel fearful, (laughs) right? Like we can't logic it. We can't philosophize it, right? Like be philosophical about and think about the inspiration and the big picture. Our feelings are still our feelings. And when we have our feelings, it's about validating them and asking them what they want us to know. There's so many keys in our astrological charts that show us the places of deep healing. We can simply look to our Chiron. We can simply look to our moon. We can simply look to our South Node. We can simply look to Saturn. All of those quote unquote karmic energies that feel heavy and hold us back. They are there to support us and show us the way where we need to heal and do that deep, most inner work. Astrology also shows us the timing. (laughs) There are specific times in our life where we're meant to heal and do the inner work. We're meant to create and share our work in the world. Oftentimes these are intertwined, but just like how I was having a little bit of a more hermit time, my astrology, I already knew that I was in a Saturn cycle and I already knew that I was approaching my Chiron return. I knew that it was time to heal. And the more effort that I put into my inner work, the more impactful I would be in my outer work. So it's not that we have to be healed to do the thing, right? I think that's what my client, you know, a few years ago, who we spent that all those tens of, not tens of thousands, but thousands of dollars on printing and her project, Um, you know, she was waiting for it to be perfect in order to do the thing. And then when it was perfect, she still didn't do the thing, right? So it's not that we have to be healed to do the thing. It's by doing the thing that we heal. And astrology is that connection tool because astrology shows us the timing. It shows us the inner journey that we are meant to go through. And it also shows us the highest potential that we are supposed to aim to. And when we get to all of those places where we're slowly, well, sometimes not so slowly, sometimes these things can happen in an instant. As we're building up the confidence, building up the trust, building up the value, building up the validation of our own feelings, as well as our superpowers that sometimes are not valued by society, that's when we can give confidence and trust into the outer brand that we can clearly see that needs to be amplified and designed by the signatures and the keys in our in our astrology that want to be visible to bring in our most aligned to bring in all the good that is waiting for us right so what i learned over this weekend that i I remember i was asking one of my other coaches and you know we all have guides i have many 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 guides i don't have guides to tell me what to do i have guides to reflect back and ask me the right questions and show me the right tools to guide myself right 
So one of my guides, um, Julia, Dr. Dr. Julia Colangelo, she is um, another flow person. And I remember I was sharing with her and she's like, Leslie, you are a thought leader. Everybody's telling me to step into my own BFD. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And what is it? that I'm not ready. So this past eclipse season, so after Megan left back for home and our retreat was done, we had our eclipse. And I remember I was like sending all of these messages to all of my one-on-one clients. I have like a, like a slew of one-on-one new moon readings. And I was going through all these new moon readings and I, I was telling these stories over and over again. I'm like, holy smokes, these stories aren't for my clients. These stories are also for me. Because in that eclipse, that Scorpio eclipse, and we're still in that eclipse. So if this is you, right, we can still do this. We have like six months to be in this eclipse energy. That Scorpio eclipse, new moon eclipse, it wasn't about planting seeds of intention. It was looking at things that we needed to unblock and clear away so that our seeds could grow. And so if my seeds that I've planted so many times was to be someone that was a big fucking deal, not to be a big fucking deal because I want to be noticed and I want to be seen, but to be a big fucking deal because I know this work is impactful and I want this work to have a bigger place in the world so that more and more people can be luminary leaders. And in order for me to own that, in order for me to own what Megan had reflected back to me. She's like, when we were working, she's like, Leslie, do you remember when you were in the car and you were talking to me about astrology and you just like, so quietly mentioned quiet confidence, you mentioned, oh, that nobody else reads a chart like me. She's like, that's what I want. She said that I said it with quiet, certain confidence, no bravado, no doubt. She reminded me that's what owning my energy is and being a BFD. Oof, what a realization, right? And I know that I do this for my customers too, okay? So this next few weeks, I am definitely on a up and up. Um, The sun is currently going through my fifth house of creation. It's going to be going through my sixth house of service to others. My energy is starting to come up. I feel like I'm coming out of those kinds of Saturn energies. And even though Saturn is is retrograde, it's still going to come back over my sun. But this third time that comes back over my sun, it's not going to feel like a depression. It's going to feel like a mastery because now I feel like I'm coming out of that hermit reclusive of my projector second line. And as I'm working on certain things yesterday, I finally went back to my Instagram channel um, because there were just like hordes and hordes of messages and comments that I just not replied to. And I love replying to my messages and my comments. And so if you're one of those people that took time to send me a comment or message, thank you for your patience because it took me a little bit to respond. But as I was going through and I saw like messages that were weeks old, I saw a message from someone I hadn't yet yet met on my Instagram. This is from many weeks ago. And she commented and she said that she's been binging my episodes. And she says that I feel like a gift from above and unlike any other astrologer I have learned from. I was like, wait, what? That was the affirmation I needed. And you know what? Yes, I need affirmations. We all need affirmations, but I hear you universe. That's right. My inner healing and my spiritual journey to dismantle oppressive labels, to give permission to my vision and allowing myself to shine brightly has allowed me to create my own version of leadership, my own version of success and my own version of change making work. And I want to show you. I want to show everyone how to tap into their astrology to do the timing and the inner healing work so that they can step into their leadership. I want to guide them on their spiritual journey that is already written in the stars that they can choose to go a different way. It's not faded, right? It's a prescription for us. It's, it's not, it's not predictive. It shows us what is the possibility and we can choose a higher way. Astrology shows us that higher way.
And so I can't wait to release my full framework out into the world. It really captures the pieces that I was talking about that didn't have a, a place in this older framework. And so I want to introduce this new framework for everyone um, using astrology, using leadership, using our inner journey. And I'm going to be sharing this framework in a brand new masterclass that I have coming up. I'll be showing you five ways to connect the dots between astrology, your spiritual journey, and your outward leadership and brand. Ah coming up on November 14th. This masterclass is called Radiate, Activating the Luminary Leader Within. Ah, it is an inner journey for sure. So if you're a change maker, whether you are an entrepreneur doing it your own way, or you work in the nonprofit or community building field, trying to create a new way, this class is for you. It's absolutely free. It's going to be on November 14th. Head on over to starpower.com forward slash radiate to sign up for absolutely free. Oh, oh my goodness. My heart is so full. I'm so grateful for all of the amazing experiences that have re I've really attracted and guided me this way because I have learned my inner alignment in this season. I want to show you how you can do that for yourself too. All right, my friends, I will be back very soon to share more stories of astrology and our change making work. Thank you for listening to Star Powered. As a human design projector, my energy shines more brightly because of people like you who share my work. If you enjoy this podcast and want to help build a movement of innovative astrology and leadership and spark the intuitive revolution, please rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, or better yet, share this podcast with your change-making besties. We will all shine brighter together as we create the future we want to see.